Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. What's unexpected is that she takes two steps towards me and wraps her arms around my body, her head coming to rest against my chest. I can feel my heart beating as all my senses feel like they're coming alive again after the dreading through the previous drinking. The smell of wine in their breath, the feeling of fingers through my clothing, the scent of all her hair underneath my chin. My hands remain out in front of me, not daring to touch her. Temptation is there to hug her, to embrace her, to everything will be fine, but it just feels wrong. Really, really wrong. I, I know what you mean, that's how I've been in the situation uh, once or twice before where you're not completely plastered and the other person is and things happen, you know? It's, it's kind of like you feel bad because it's sort of... Do you have a responsibility to say no? I, I, I would think you do, because they're not going to remember it. And that's not right, because it's like a violation almost. Think of super bad. When in doubt, think of super bad and what happened. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to spoil it, but just think of super bad. My hands are made out in front of me, I'm not daring to touch her. Temptation is there to hug her, to embrace her, tell her everything will be fine, but it feels wrong. Oh, I've read that. What the fuck? Hanako? But I want to stay up with you and Lily. Hanako's slurring reminds me a bit of Misha. She probably won't be pleased to hear that. You know, I, I can't. You're, you're a girl, and, uh, and I'm, I have a penis, and Lily needs to sleep. She gets a disappointed groan. Ugh, it's so strange for her to act so forward. Don't worry, I'll, I'll see you again tomorrow, okay? I said the rest of hand on her to reassure her. Sign this is as far as I'll allow myself to go in terms of physical contact while she's in this state. Nako's head nose against my chest. Makes me feel all the more uneasy with the situation, and as her arms turn around my back, I quickly decide to bail out. I rest my hand on her shoulders and give a firm but gentle push. Her grip tightens a little, and so do I, but she eventually breaks off. I don't want you to go. Uh. Hanako, please. Akira and Lily are going to start thinking weird stuff if I take too long here. Perfectly true, too. I really don't want to get any chances, and I feel very uncomfortable right now. I shouldn't try to read anything the way she's acting now. I read that aside from alcohol, lowering inhibitions, people react, getting drunk in many different ways that don't necessarily reflect reality. And let me tell you something. Shit that's going on right now, far from reality, okay? She's shy and timid, and all of a sudden she wants this flirting, outgoing person. But then again, you're going to hurt her feelings. And is it right to hurt someone's feelings? I don't know. Does she have a nose? I just realized that. Huh. And even without that, there are plenty of ways to interpret what she's saying. As long as she's safe, I'm going to try and get out of her room as soon as possible. And Akko hiccups again, looking at right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the center of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more. And now, all alone in the room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she acting upbeat to make sure we didn't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her, since I do exactly the same thing in regards to my own condition? She disappears. Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually managed to corral Hanako towards her bed. Though her attempts to tame the wild cheats, I end up accomplishing little. I'm sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but happy birthday. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She looks up for me for a moment. I have no idea if what I said actually got through her there, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I sigh in a bit of relief before quickly going back from her room and leaving there, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. How about you You go with this? Uh, Hanako was drunk. She tried to come out to me. I had to kill her. And that's what happened. Probably wouldn't go over too well. I open the door and make sure to close it behind me, lest any passing students catch a glimpse of the wine before turning my attention to the two girls at the low table. Why, hello there, ladies. Ever heard of Menage a Trois? Kira's casual smiling, as is Lily. I welcome the change from the moon in Hanaka's room. Two fucking they got really serious. Is that you, Hassel? No, just some random stranger coming in at 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, your sister didn't say anything about it. Yeah, I, I got Hanako to bed. She, she's sleeping. Now, that's good. I have to admit, I hadn't thought she's drank quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She's all safe and tucked in bed now, with the way she is. She awkwardly trails off to Lily and I, I would hardly protest. Someone so anxious and fearful, drinking would give an easy out for those constant feelings. I wish I could do more. I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend. It's only ever felt that way, but now, now I think I know why. Lily's been there for both Anaka and me since I first met her. But she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, when's that bond between me and Hanako? After rescuing our relationship following the panic attack, I inadvertently triggered during class. I feel like we're back to being friends, but she's on my mind more and more. I can't say I view any other girl quite in the same way, but maybe it's just a normal reaction to someone acting like this. It, it kind of is. I mean, you've, you've spent time with her now. You have feelings. You've talked to her. You guys have bonded a little bit. I, I would say it's safe to assume that you, you feel some kind of connection. Hell. If it was, if, if you really had, I know this is just a visual novel and stuff, and you know, people are like, oh, chill, don't be a faggot, meh, 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 you know, but just think about it, if you're spending time with someone a week, and you're both in, like, very, 
uh, bad states or bad, bad times in your life and you're more susceptible to someone's feelings and someone's emotions and them coming on to you, I think you would be very open to this and it would hurt you a little bit to find out the other person doesn't think the same way. Even more so than in real life, if you weren't sick. But alas, this is just merely a visual novel, so we'll never know. Say Akira. She yawns before looking at me. Oh, this guy is pretty late. You know about what happened with Na yeah, you know about what happened with Nako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiate pretty hard for a break so I can come down here and make her help birthday a bit bright. We get along pretty well. It's surprising to hear that from someone as extroverted as her, but if Nako came to know if there were Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I'd better get going. I'm already going to be late as it is. Didn't you get a break off? It's like midnight. Why are you going? What do you... I don't even know what you are. I don't even have an excuse. Business is close. I was about to say stockbroker, but that ends at like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Uh, bank managers, they stop at 3 o'clock. I, I don't even know. And accountants don't do anything. Actually, accountants work 24-7. Fuck that. Um, but it's it's already so late. Yeah, that sounds... Sorry, we got a bunch of work dropped on us. So overtime it is, Lily. You know how my life is. As her sister disappears, she levers herself up with a grunt, heads past me towards the door. Just before she leaves, she turns back towards us. You haven't forgot about the old time for the flight now, have you? Don't worry. I have everything ready. It's just a matter of packing when it comes closer to the time to leave. Atta girl. I'll see you guys later then. And with that, she disappears to the door with her hand held high in farewell. Hal Hel Hasselhoff. Hel Hasselhoff. Your sister is <laughs> something all right. I probably should have thought that comment before th saying it. Regardless, Silly seems quite amused at my appraisal. Yes, my appraisals are quite well. Quite good. Quite well. Quite English. I don't know how to do it. You okay after all that drinking? Not wasted and just hiding it well. Bleh. I assure you, I am quite all right. I can moderate myself. You seem quite so self-possessed as well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, I guess your moderation applies to me as well. Smiley face. With a little hesitation, I take a seat at the table in front of Lily. I want to address that directly, if for no other reason than settle my own thoughts. Been mean to ask this, but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea what triggered that panic attack? I guess it was something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything more. You're going to get the story right now, and I don't know if you're going to want to hear about how the candles pickled everybody. Even the cure was being careful around her, so I assume she knows so as well. Lily's smile drops. The gaiety of the birthday party now, well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure of all the details myself. Anaka told you that she was in a house fire. She told me as much after we met and spent a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She never told you? <gasps> Assuming the worst, what does she have to look back upon? A life of isolation and possibly even the death of her family? Maybe even going as far as blaming her existence for their deaths? Even thinking about what little I know about Anaka's past is bleak. To have lived through all of that and live on with those memories, it must be infinitely worse. Looks like Lily is similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine, but it feels like we're just talking this out. It's a good thing anyway, it is. You want to sometimes clear the air. Um, that's why they call it clearing the air. Grieving, you know, the airing of grievances, if you will. Getting everything out in the open so you can address it. It's good. I feel kind of helpless about it. When it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I should tell you this, but Anaka told me that you visited her the day after we both went to check on her. <gasps> that thieving, coward, and conniving bastard. I must admit, I had not predicted she would take a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. I'm just... It wasn't much. I'm just... I love her. It's just at times that, like this, I, I sometimes think it'd be better if we never had to leave Yamaka, or at least this town. Things are so much easier without others around. Well, buddy, you gotta grow up someday. I, I, I feel you, but we're all gonna move out. We're all gonna do our own thing, and eventually, sooner or later, we're gonna look in those childish dreams and think, you know, did we accomplish them? Did we not accomplish them? And eventually, when you want to say, what do I want to be when I grow up? That's not gonna apply anymore, because you, you're gonna be grown up. And, you know, the only thing you're gonna say then is, what did I want to be when I was a child? I know, sad fucking thought, but hey, it's that's life in reality. But unfortunately, people do get old, and people have to move on. It's, it's the way everything goes. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled at what I'd say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak, but stops herself as soon as she does, and rethinks. It's a bit off-putting. I, I think... What do you think? Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? For, no, no, Friday, no. 
Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it'd be a good idea to tie yourself out before you even get there. Well, you could sleep on a plane. I'll be alright. You needn't worry about me. I do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine I'll go... <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Very burpy. But I imagine Ahaka will be feeling rather off for a while. The thought of how she's going to be tomorrow makes me grimace. Maybe we should count her blessing that she didn't end up throwing up from drinking so much all over me and her dolls while having such a low tolerance. Watch, you're going to go in there. She's going to be aspirating on her own vomit. You should go fucking check on her. That's another thing. If you ever do put someone to bed that's drunk, make sure they're not laying... Oh, fuck. I don't even know. I don't even know what's the correct way. <laughs> Just be careful when someone passes out. For one, blood flow. Um... Because you, you literally, if someone like sleeps the wrong way, they can just die. Um, and two, that way she doesn't uh, vomit and then choke on it and die. So that's another thing. So you gotta be careful. You gotta, I think you put them on their side. Something like that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if someone, someone's dying, put them on their side. There you go. That's that's Jill's help for saving everybody. Well, I'm going to be able to attend whatever you're planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little excursion. Excursion into your pants. Salonian and demonian is chemical reactions on the periodic table. And you, you better be off us, Sal. I can't imagine as long until curfew's here. We blew curfew. We're wasted. Damn curfew. Newman. I'd completely forgotten. Look at the clock next to Louis' bed. That's that's a that's an egg. Or a potato. But it seems to be some oddity without written numerals, which I suppose makes sense given Louis' condition. Yeah, it, that's a that's a potato. I don't want to risk a haughty security patrol giving me a scolding. I get up and decide to go to my dorm, as she says. Well then, I guess I'll see you in Anako tomorrow. Assuming both of you manage to get up in the morning, uh, ladies. That's my, that's my junk impersonation. Thank you for your concern, Asal. Until then. With that, I make my way out her door into the hallway. I hope her, I hope her idea will be a good one. Katawa shohojo do do do. Katawa shohojo do 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 do. I st still don't even have a fucking answer to that. Oh fuck! Oh, don't be Kenji. My head's fucking pounding. Oh fuck! Once, twice, three times. A little long, annoyed breath. <sighs> and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for everyone to just go awake. It's not gonna happen. I feel pretty damn awful. My face feels like it's cast out of lead. My arms feel heavy, and I feel very queasy. Well, just since I woke up a half an hour ago, I can't summon the energy to pick myself out of the bed. Red Bull. So this is what they call a hangover. What if perhaps it's the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult? Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. Oh, motherfucker, go the fuck away, you can't you? Series of thumps rings out again, reverberating the entire small room. What's it just give up already? I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Second pass, turning the minutes. Since then, no more knocks coming from the door. Fred must have left. I didn't think Kenji would be that easy to get rid of. 